Hello, everyone, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 24. Um, so t before we get into anything, we're going to go with uh, Jeremy for the, um, the Bipcot license. Yes, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the Bipcot NoGov license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. And uh, I would just like to say uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back this week. I was bummed I missed out on last week's conversation. But if I learned one thing, it's that no matter what, I'm needed for this portion because that was just, that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> At least I have a purpose. Even if <laughs> it's pitiful. It's pitiful. <laughs> oh, I messed yeah. up. A, I messed up a one-liner. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so today we have Michael King, who is a agorist, uh, panarchist. Um, he served in the military for five years, and he's uh, he has a Facebook page, "Don't Tread on Anyone," and he's also contributed to the Voluntary Virtues Network um, with his podcast uh, called "The Currency of Anarchy." And he's, um, he's also got his YouTube channel, uh, Michael Freeman. Um, so, th so the topic today we're going to discuss is, um, is it moral or right for anarchists to be on welfare, to receive government um, money, government subsidies, stolen funds, fun stuff like that. Um, so before we get into that, uh, all that, maybe we'll get into his past of, uh, of how he became uh, an anarchist. Um, so w Michael, welcome to the show. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so so just uh, if you can go into a little bit of your past, you know what what got you to start on this path? What books, podcasts, personalities, um, you know, people, what what influenced you? What made you go? What the fuck? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, coming out of the military, coming back to real life, some of the stuff I saw in in combat and afterwards uh, had a lot to do with it. I I got into veteran activism, <laughs> if if you would believe that that's a fucking thing. Uh, for a while, and you know, trying to end things like the 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 time it takes for for soldiers who come back from combat or get out of the military to receive their benefits, um, you know, veterans making more money, b better benefits, stuff like that. Um, and and I, I did that for a little while, and kind of became a hardcore neoconservative from there. Um, Beforehand, I was apolitical. I, I was like a punk rocker as a little kid, and I called myself an anarchist, but I didn't really know what that meant. <laughs> and then I joined the military and became a nationalist, so there's <laughs> that. Um, hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Right. Uh, and from there, um, you know, slowly found, like, info wars, and I noticed that being a conspiracy conservative made me kind of angry and, like, nervous and fucking paranoid. <laughs> um, so then I found, like, like Adam Kokesh's show and I noticed I laughed more often and had fun with with the world collapsing around me and immorality surrounding me everywhere <laughs> um, and I, I kind of dug some Ron Paul for a little while and I don't know I read uh, The Anatomy of the State by Murray Rothbard um, that's the red pill right there. Yeah, it was the big one for me. I, I read some stuff. I listened to some music. I went to some events. I talked to some people, networked into some circles. And I don't know. I was I, I never really called myself an ANCAP, but I thought I was a hardcore ANCAP for quite a while. And I, I made all these ANCOM jokes like fucking Dave does. Like, you know, hate, hated the anarcho-communists more than I hate the state. And I realized that that's kind of counterproductive. And this is kind of a numbers game. For the time being, we need people to hate the state, and I, th I think it makes more sense to figure out econ and our little societies later on. Right now, we have a bigger fish to fry, and I found this whole, um, this theory of 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 panarchy that Proudhon coined, you know, decades ago. And you could tie in Sam Cockin's New Libertarian Manifesto, the, the theory of agorism. Um, so now I do that. I, I suppose I'm more of a black flag kind of guy. Um, I don't like to use the word mutualist because I'm not so into <laughs> the uh, fucking public means of production myself. But uh, yeah, more, I'm more like that. I can be cool. I can I can go take advantage of the fact that the Ancoms don't want to have money and make money off of them and be their friends and smoke weed with you, them. You sound like more like an individualist anarchist. It's like um, yeah. what what whatever. As long as I don't have to use coercion in my day to day life, this the, I don't care what it is. Pretty much. Yeah, that's I. You know, that's I still do I, call myself a libertarian. I still do call myself a voluntarist. I, I think most. Um, I think most uh, 
and caps are are agorist because agorism is just essentially a free market with no you know it's no state I would, coercion i don't know about i would that. call <laughs> yeah i don't know about all that like anarcho-capitalists have a theory where agorism is taking that theory and putting it into action that's how i would i would define it mm, yeah agorism I, is the act of anarcho-capitalizing or or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 and cap in motion i guess is, is what you could say yeah so but uh it, yeah it's a that's a wild ride you had there man with the military and all that and seeing combat and everything it's it normally makes someone bitter uh when uh, very bitter when they get out and they and they see things for what they are um and they realize holy shit i fought for a lie and oh, yeah. it's it's a lot to, it's a lot not only did you see that horrendous something that no human should ever see you have to now deal with the fact that it was all a bullshit lie. It's just, it's, it's a worse. lot. It's a lot it's, to co- overcome emotionally. First, first, I had to deal with the fact that it's a bullshit lie, and I figured that out pretty quick. But then I had to deal with the fact that I was the bad guy. That was not the easiest thing to fucking yeah. accept. <laughs> not sure that I have accepted that yet. I just kind of <laughs> laugh at everything. I I suppose. Um, but yeah, that was, it was really difficult, and it still is. It still fucking hurts. Like. I think I've mostly beaten the PTSDs and all that stuff, but uh, I do have this really big guilt thing. Like, I try as damn hard as I can to be virtuous and a noble, moral actor, and huh, my track record's a little tarnished, you know? Well, I mean, you can't you can't change your past. You can only change your future. So, Agreed. Yeah. There's, I mean, to, to keep revisiting it, you're never going to personally change, and, you know, I applaud you for striving forward. Cheers. Like, I know that um, I owe, for you and Caps, right? Like, I owe restitution to lots of people. Like, I know that. Unfortunately, I'm not sure who a lot of those people were. So in order to to give them, to return the favor, all I can really do is try to save the whole fucking world. <laughs> and uh, that's why we're here. <laughs> Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, Thank well, I, I think that's, I mean, it's, it's something I think all of us deal with on a smaller level um you know obviously people who've been in the military have to deal with even more um but it's you know to for me i can understand why you know obviously i mean i, I can only try to empathize with your situation because never being in it but i i can i can see why it would be difficult but i mean i actually i'm going to stop you and interject i i really don't like when people say like a few times there, you're like, well, I don't understand. Like, fuck all that, dude. I'm sure that in your past, you've done some things that hurt other people in some yeah. way that you're not proud of. Absolutely. We can all relate. Yeah, that, okay. Whether it's with the military or with, you know. Yeah, all right. I, I, get, your, I get your point. Well, I, it, I did I mean, steal a Limp Biscuit CD from Kmart one, <laughs> one, one year when I was really young. One, one year? Oh, God, shoplifting. That was a hobby of mine. I, mean, I, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I apologize to Fred Durst. <laughs> Openly on this podcast, Fred Durst should be apologizing to us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's. I, I think the thing is, you, all you can. You're right. All you can do is is what you can do now. And like Dave said, you you can't. Not only can you not change it, but on some level, we're all culpable for not doing something sooner. But we also didn't know. You know, it. Tell you, everybody figures this out at a different point in life. You know, so I mean, you can't really. You can't. That's one of those situations you can't pay restitution. So all, all you can do is well, lead it's, by, it's lead by like, example now and try to, you know, try to make the things better, which is exactly I'll try, what you're doing. <laughs> I'll try some. I'll, I'll sometimes actually use it as a tool, like my, my veteranism, because um, there are some <laughs> there are some people who will put me on a pedestal when I speak. Right. Like some anarchists can't be like, hey, fuck this state. The troops are the troops are welfare whores to a general crowd of people. But sometimes with the right crowd, I can kind of get away with it. Because I'm like, well, I'm a veteran. Fuck the troops, yada, 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 yeah. right? Well, I mean, that's the whole reason for our Force the Freedom show on Wednesdays. <laughs> is this, Both of them are ex-military. So, you know, it's that point of relation where, you know, like, if I'm going to get my... If, if I'm going to get yelled at somebody, you know, like, I don't want to... You know, I'm a redneck from Alabama. I don't want to hear about rednecks from somebody up north, okay? Like, if somebody down here says all rednecks are this, that, and the other, it's like, okay, I, I fucking get it. But, you know, if somebody up north who's never been down here or lived down here or been around anybody down here, what the fuck do you know? So I understand the whole the whole premise behind the thing, and that's, that's, that's what we're going for with that show. Uh, and that's – you using that as a tool is a great example of, you know, just – using that emotional point of, of, 
of relation with somebody to kind of break down a wall. If it comes down to make, helping somebody hate the state, they're my sworn enemy, even though I used to be one of them. I'm, a, I'm totally okay with emotional manipulation. No problem whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> even if you hate the state because you think fucking black lives matter, okay, that's fine. <laughs> you know, like, that, that kind of reminds you of, uh, like, you know, the sensitivity people have around black people, you know, when talking about black stuff. It's like, it's like you have to tiptoe because you think they might get offended, right? <laughs> and, if there's and, one and, thing you guys need to know about me, I, I don't tiptoe. No subject, <laughs> yeah, no I, fucking topic. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's very unfortunate when people feel like they have to. And, you know, they do that around those. And they also do that around veterans. And, yep. um uh, and you know, I, I just the way I just the way I look at it, I, I, I call it as it is. You know, some people get offended when I because I tell people I attack uh, or I criticize ideas and concepts, not people or individuals, right? Because individuals make mistakes, individuals can improve, but concepts <laughs> and belief systems, they're just there to be, you know, um, you know, grappled with and change and and they evolve. And so it's kind of funny when I when I criticize the military, like veterans come at me like I just attacked them for what they did I'm like well if I didn't describe you the way the way you acted why are you why are you um you know insulted like you know what I you did you know, you, you know why you did it and so why would you be insulted I'm just talking about the general idea of social you know uh, the well, socialism I, military well so. I fought for your freedom of speech so shut the fuck up <laughs> Step on this flag and I'll step on your ass. See, these people, when, when you when you insinuate something that's negative towards their their service, they are not listening to what you say. Your words, your definitions, your logic, yeah. reason—it right. doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Cops, yeah. Are the, cops are the same way. I just yeah, dealt cops with that are was, the same way. The I, I, dealt, the same I, way. I dealt with that same way. It's the same thing recently because I dared to ask a question about morality with them, and they got very mad and. Then they started insisting that I was calling them Nazis, and I'm like, I never said that, and I repeated the <laughs> phrase I used, and to, to, comparing this, comparing the logic, and they didn't want to hear it. Like, it's just it. like they got so mad at me. I don't understand why. <laughs> it's it's like Stockholm induced, like vicious pack mentality. It's the same with yeah. with fucking churches, sports teams, um, mm -hmm. militaries, flags, religion. Uh, well, if you see how if you see how belief in a, a god, uh, a religious god, is beat into someone from a very early age and just, you know, you're going to church or you're not fucking eating kind of situation. And that that's the same way with, with, with nationalism. So people have the same way when you tell someone, hey, your God doesn't exist or something, you're going to get the same thing if you say, hey, your nation sucks ass or, or you fought for a, a bullshit idea or something. They're going to say, what? You're... you're <laughs> you're you're saying my God doesn't exist, and that you're going to get that religious fervor and, and angst back. You're not going to get rational thought because that's not a rational idea that's been beat into their head. Yeah, you're not yeah. going to find rational thought where rational thought doesn't exist. Sure. No, yeah, yeah. You, you fucking nailed it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that um, you know when when they do get insulted because you criticize an idea, basically what they're saying is they're not an individual. They don't have they don't have like free will <laughs> because they identify with a concept with this e e huge amorphous blob of a concept and they don't exist as an individual in that concept right they're, they're just they're just <laughs> one one lego piece it part of the concept and uh, and that's the problem you know that's that's yeah that's what you just said collectivism you that know, used to be what... me I, I used to be that guy like Step on my flag, I'll stomp your or yeah, stomp my flag, I'll stomp your ass, right? Like I actually used to be that guy. Like I made the joke a few minutes ago, like uh, uh, I fought for your freedom of speech, so shut the fuck up. I actually used to think that way, and uh, I don't know. I that's what I, I'm saying I, about sports teams and churches. It's just this same. I know this because I, I I'm bred in it. Like it's this same school spirit. We are better than you because colors fucking mentality and it's vicious and violent. And I love when I get called a commie, a pinko commie by a, mil a member of the military and I go you have more in common than any Soviet than I have ever or ever will. You, you are the communist in this, in, this, in this equation, not me sir. And then he's just going to call you a liberal, a libtard and be like you fuck your your smarts, libtard, right? <laughs> it's like I don't. I'm gonna blindly follow this because reasons. Because re because reasons. Of yeah. fucking, uh, I know it's not rational, but god damn it. Hashtag, but that's none of my business. 
<laughs> but, uh, yeah. okay. So like, like, the, the other day we got into a little conversation. Me, Michael, Jeremy. I don't know if Danilo was in it, but Donnie from the uh, the Free, Force yeah. for Freedom and Lloyd and a bunch of people on my uh, Facebook. Uh, we kind of got into a big uh, spat about. Um, it was some some kind of welfare or some kind of oh yeah my my dad we were, I was over at my dad's house the other day and me and him kind of been talking and he said um would you take the same job that you're working now would you take that working for the state making double and I said no under no circumstances would I take that and he said well why because I don't believe you I said because how do they get that money to pay my salary and he said well they taxes and I said what are taxes he said they're and I said they're theft. So that job would be paid for by theft, and I'm against theft, and you should be too. And he said, "Okay, I understand." And then they, you know, that kind of opened up a big can of worms with a few uh, ex-military members because, you know, you're talking about benefits, you're talking about all this. It's like, is it okay to take welfare and be a logically consistent anarchist? And my position is no. I mean, Jeremy kind of, kind of pulled pulled me. Uh, he kind of made me think about some things, but. You know, it's Damn you, Jeremy. I can say something <laughs> and not like I can say something and, and be Good right. Two even, things, apparently. It, <laughs> I can say something and, and, it, and it be right and not be doing that same thing. OK, I can say it's probably not a good idea to smoke cigarettes and smoke cigarettes. OK, and I can be right about that. So like me saying that it's not OK to be on welfare or use the government any way, uh, any voluntary uh, relationship with the government that you have, that is correct. Like there's involuntary and there's voluntary relationships with the state, you know, applying for food stamps is voluntary. Driving on government roads is involuntary because you have no control over that. So, um, you know, I did work for a large corporation. The corporation uses market protectionist government stuff. So I, I it's what leg do I have to stand on to tell a mil military member who is basically using the same system that he's wrong and I'm right. But I'm right, even though I'm not practicing it. <laughs> I know that sounds. I know that sounds like I'm. I'm. I know that sounds like I'm. Like it's you're, like you're, you're, you're I, got, you got to pick pick a fucking side. Like which, just, which not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not racist, but <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's not even that. It's it's. This is, like, is going to sound misogynist, but it's just it's, a Daveism. It's okay. It's Dave, not. No, no, it. It, no. You think about it. It is. It it, it does sound like a, a situation where it's do as I say, not as I do situation, but. I'm trying to actively get out of that. You know, yeah. when you find out about these things, it's not like you can just go, hey, you know what? Fuck it. I'm dropping this, all of this. Like, I'm actively trying to get out of this, and I've never um, directly applied for or received any welfare benefits uh, or anything like that other than involuntary um, interactions with the state. And, Was your uh, job involuntary, Dave? No. Thank you. But my job would exist sans state. But, but, but again, that. Oh, so okay. go ahead. No, you no, you were gonna make my point anyways. Go ahead. No, 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 no. no my no, my point is, I mean, I don't, I, I can't defend the point because I'm not. Well, yeah, you can practicing what I preach. So that, I'm, well, that, I, I just got let go. I, I'm, I'm, I'm currently unemployed now, <laughs> uh, as of Tuesday this week. So like, I'm technically practicing what I'm preaching now until I get another job that In, involuntarily but, practicing what he yeah. preaches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, the, but, but you know, I, I. I want to I want to not work for a corporation. I want to not pay any taxes. I want to do all these things, but it doesn't it's 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 I don't know how it could happen. Like uh it, rock and hard place this is one of the worst rock and hard place scenarios unless you just want to live like in the woods uh off the land and somehow the government never fucks with you. But, you know, Michael has some points and Donnie has some points it's like why not use the system to drain the system? And you know, it's it's almost like the thing where like you know there's a reason why they say don't feed the animals in a in a reserve, you know it's like don't don't. All right, I'll I'll start there. Um, <laughs> you're in a reserve, son. <laughs> you are in the reserve, and you, oh, I know, I know. Uh, I have many many different points. Perhaps they're rationalizations. I'm not sure, but uh, I receive a government pension because of because of my my quotes here service, right? And. <laughs> you know, I just have like 70 different hip pocket arguments, none that are very thoroughly thought about, to be honest with you, because I don't think that I need to. I think fundamentally what we're talking about here on a much, much larger and more free range scale, we are in an internment camp 
And what I'm doing by receiving my pension, that is also contractually obligated to me from the state, mind you, for you property rights guys. Um, but what we're really talking about is I'm stealing scraps off of the table of my fucking captors, right? Um, it, with the current state of affairs, it's it's not a rational society. It's not a reasonable society. It's certainly not a free market society where a, a dollar speaks or where your your labor is actually producing what it should, right? And okay, fine. That that that's one. Um, you know, there's a there's a a, a debate to be had about bleeding the state dry. Um, if you know, if they don't have the money, it'll be there will be less bombs, right? There, there's just fifty different ways that I, I I can spin this, and we could get deep about which individual one you guys would want to. You also did did make a good point uh, off air before we started here about legitimizing the state. You know, them giving me a paycheck gives them a reason to exist. Like, I'm sure they could come up with other reasons to exist. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Obviously, yeah. That's a good point that I... I no, no, no. Like, I think, the, I think the core argument is, is, okay, we're all in this system, right? But if there was no system... I don't think anybody on this Skype call would be begging for that system. And, and, you know, I think that's where we're, we're at. I think that's where we're at. We're at least logically consistent to be, if, if things were idealistic and, and ideal that we would not be, you know, the ones marching in the street with, you know, socialism now and, and free the workers parties and stuff. We wouldn't be doing anything like that. And we wouldn't be wanting a fascist state like the conservatives do either. So we would be wanting nothing. We would be wanting opportunities for us to provide our own way in life. And I think that once you, like, like take a take a city like Detroit or take a city like uh, St. Louis or, hell, just Birmingham where, where I live. If you, turn off the, if you turn off the faucet, all these people that literally live on welfare, they're not going to be able to feed themselves. <clears throat> Period. It's, they're not going to be able to feed them fu their fucking selves or their kids. Like, this is fact. You turn that shit off tomorrow, they all die. So... <laughs> Or are they riot and something else gets put up? So oh. it it's it's all about why be on government subsidies and stuff when you could be actively working towards getting yourself sustain uh, sustainable, your life sustainable. And I know that you can make the you can you can beg the question for the uh, well, the state's here. You got to deal with it, you know. And and the there's. I mean, the the state's here. You have to. Well, that, that 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 is a reality that unfortunately we all do have to come across, Dave. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think I, I think you're uh, you're generalizing a little too much. Um, you know, although actually you kind of went all absolute honest again <laughs> with all with all the people with all the people would die. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think I mean, that's not true. all the people. I, die, I think because because but... I mean, that that's the that's that's actually the conservative argument against welfare. The claim that they're all these lazy people. Are there people that are lazy? Yes. Are are anywhere near all of the people that are receiving that type of government welfare lazy and and would not be able to f try to figure out a way? No, not at all. The, you know, there there's plenty of people out there that are just in a shitty position. Whether something else that government has done that has forced their you know forced their other their industry out or whatever, or people just sh actually down on their luck or whatever. You know, so there there's a lot more of them than there. Are. So I I hate hearing that argument because that's that's what the conservatives, with the hardcore conservatives, the neocons. There push. is that's, truth in it though. No. To a certain extent, but nowhere near all the people are like that. So a lot more people would be able to at least have the wherewithal to go. Okay, I need to come up with another plan now. If the if it, if the rug got pulled out from under. I mean, but it's, there are but, people like that. But there I are. Mean, all I'm, I'm going to say is, look that. at Venezuela right now. What's going on in Venezuela? They're going in and they're they're saying, hey, you know what? Fuck your police. We're going to go entirely just strip this well, entire yes, supermarket that's, that's, clean. That's, that's, all, that's also a different situation because Venezuela has been like that for decades. You think it's you think Venezuela's socialism is any different than America right now? It's a lot more advanced, and it's been well, of that course way. it's, it's been, a few no, steps ahead. But yes, and it's been a few America's steps the ahead. largest it's, socialist it's state in the, steps, in the world. Yes, but this is this also goes back to our, a previous discussion we've had about you know what would happen if. Um, you know, the, the, you know, the great, you know, push the button question. Um, and I, we've discussed before, and I've said there's certain, there's certain 
pretty decent sized factions of this country that wouldn't notice for a while because oh yeah they're so the far removed of omaha nebraska yeah, you're gonna most, be fine well that's what i'm saying most of the midwest won't even recognize it so yes the socialism is, is much more advanced than venezuela so what you're seeing there can it happen here eventually yes um but it, where people most of the people here are, are nowhere close to that are there people that are lazy just using the system and completely lazy yes i'm not arguing that point what my point was that you kind of made it a all, the, all of them would die because all of them are like this. Well, cities just... are artificially propped up by governments and, and, like at that size, and, and you can't tell me. the goalpost. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not moving the goalpost at all. Like you look at you look at a, a city like New York, that city could not operate with that many people in it without government in some way. I, I would I would love for you to show me a, an example of a city that has 12 million people that could work like that. I, I live just outside of it, man. Believe me, I'd love to try, <laughs> but it's, it's it's that's a whole. It's other issue. That population is yes, artificially there. That's that the, size that is artificially a, there because that, that of government. The, that wasn't the point I was making. But to your other point about the le legitimizing, I mean, because we've had this discussion before. At, at least to me, I, I find it hard to to separate legitimizing the system through taking a pension per se, or you know, or getting. I don't know. I guess getting a government job now to me is a little more difficult to to come down on a, a black or white, uh, you know, which way I land on that. But if you already were receiving a pension or set to receive a pension before you became an anarchist or what, you know, whatever, before you had these these realizations, I can't. I have a hard time separating doing continuing to do that as a form of legitimization versus all the other things that we are yes coerced to use but in the mind of all the statists out there it still legitimizes the system so how how do you how can we really separate those two Bingo, you know, yeah, bang that, that that's that's where that's where i have the difficulty with it that's why it, it, it's it's never been very cut and dry for me and i'm still i still struggle with this and i i've said this before on other podcasts it's a pragmatic, it, it's a pragmatic well, no, versus moral I, well to a certain extent, yes, but even for me, the moral, I, I have a hard time with the moral issue about it, too, because, again, all these things we are coerced into using in order to sustain life. Technically, we could still avoid almost all of this, you know, even the roads like you, you know, you could survive if you got yourself some books and read some shit and got some got some more skills than you have already and walk everywhere and not need to use the roads like there's so there's still that step that you could take that you could still avoid using all this stuff but we still do because it's convenient so if is, isn't like i said the legitimization doesn't matter to us we all see the state as illegitimate it's the millions upon millions that still see it as legitimate that are the goddamn problem so if using the roads and doing all the other stuff that we know we're coerced into doing but they think is just part of a, a, the system and how it, things are supposed to work it's still legitimized in their eyes and they're the ones we have to they're the ones we have to those are the eyes we have to change not our, you know our, we're already there so if, i don't know you know before i found <laughs> reason logic socioeconomics all these theories before i found all of that Anything, like we were talking about the past earlier, anything that I may or may not have done is not moot entirely, but I wasn't enlightened at the time. If I want to join the army now, knowing what I know about this particular institution, then yeah, call me a scumbag. Then I'm doing bad works, right? But things that I did before <coughs> I knew what was, I'm not saying I'm absolved of crimes or anything like that, but it's not a not... What I did before being an anarchist, of course, it was a non-anarchist or libertarian position, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Like, um, you know, you can't really blame somebody for the past because if they were ignorant of their actions, of you know what the effects of their actions were, then you, how can you really blame them? <laughs> That's kind of a. Uh, but then you're right. Once you get the knowledge and the awareness of what's going on, then then if you ignore what you're doing and you continue doing those same actions, then you're really culpable, right? Then sure. you're responsible because then you really have a platform where like, wait, you know what, wait a minute, I have a choice, but I'm <clears> still <throat> going to be in, 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 you know, an immoral bastard. <laughs> so, so then, then you really got a problem. But, but, um, but yeah, yeah, definitely. That's why I, you know, I, I harp so much on, on talking about concepts and belief systems. You know, this is what we have to really affect, you know, the minds of the people because, 
you know, the, you know, the when when individuals believe that they're a part of this collective known as statism, you know, that is what gives legitimacy and power to the system, to the state, right? That's because because you know, of course, we outnumber the state and its enforcers, you know, many times over, right? So once the people believe that it no longer has legitimacy, then it's just another gang or a mafia then it's over. It's the house of cards has fallen, you know, the, the curtain <laughs> goes away and it's just a wall of bricks. And then people realize, um, you know, taxation is theft, you know, war is mass murder, you know, things like that. Printing money is just counterfeiting. So then, then all, the, all the legal plunder, double standards fall away. And then, uh, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, I like, I like the analogy of, you know, the state is like, um, it's like people, uh, a, a bunch of people just, just blowing hot air uh, you know, and and keeping the balloon afloat in the air, right? And they, all they have to do <laughs> to get rid of the state is stop blowing <laughs> at the balloon, and it will just fall, right? Yeah. So, so that's all that gives you know, like, like Larkin Rose always said, I'm not afraid of the Mao's, the Stalin's, the Hitlers, or right, or the Pol Pot's, right? I'm afraid of the millions of people that mindlessly believe that they have authority and legitimacy and carry out their, um, you know, mass murdering, genocidal will. So. But yeah. I, no, I agree with everything you just said, Danilo. It's just the, the the argument that taking a military job or taking a, a, a state job or something or, or a bureaucracy job is, is somehow you can twist that to be you're bleeding the state. I just don't I, – I can't buy that because it's not – that's not realistic. I mean, I mean, I mean the, the way I look at the state is kind of like um... – you know, like 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 a business. You know, it's it's um, how do you say self-propagating, right? If it if the demand is being satisfied, it will grow, right? It, you know, profits. You know, it's just it's just like a, a, a nice feedback mechanism. Whereas the state, it's completely perverted. You know, the it, it will only grow. Um, you know, not. <laughs> Not because demand is being satisfied, but because, you know, by force, through violence, you know, that's the only reason. So it's, I like to describe it like it's like a self-licking ice cream comb, you know. <laughs> so the only reason that the state grows is, you know, people's, it's like, a, you know, people's uh, hallucination that it has legitimacy, right? So that's why it's so important for us to, you know, to, to strip away that legitimacy. So, so the way I see it, it, it is inherently self-destructive, regardless if you're taking a welfare check or you're not, either way, you know, if you go the agorist route, if you go, you know, bleeding the state drive through, through, uh, you know, getting as much government uh, money as possible, they'll, they're both successful in my mind. <laughs> neither one, neither one is, uh, neither one is really detrimental. Um, if, if you're really taking the government money and you're an anarchist and you, you understand that it is illegitimate and you're using it for your ends, for your, you know, anarchist ends, then I think it's, um, it's helpful <laughs> in achieving those ends. Well put. So. Yeah, well, I, 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 I agree with that, but I, I think that makes it. I mean, to to Dave's point before, that that becomes more of the pragmatic argument versus the more like that's that's where the clear separation is. That's when it becomes mm -hmm. because from a pragmatic standpoint, what what's gonna what's gonna bring a, bring across the 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 fall of the state quicker, gaining more people on our quote unquote side and having them vacate the state and having it collapse that way or people you know it's it's the bleed versus starve yeah. mentality whether you're gonna whether you're gonna starve the state or whether you're gonna bleed the state well which is gonna have the quicker effect mm -hmm. the, with the way things are already set up bleeding the state and rushing in hyperinflation seems like a hell of a lot more likely scenario to happen before convincing enough people to simply walk away from the state and go the agorist route and mm -hmm. start over that way um, so from a pra like I said, it's that's the more pragmatic argument. It's still the moral issue. I mean, I mean, I, I fully believe that technology is going to phase the state out. Yeah, I, I think at some point it, we've talked about that before. I, I think at some point it, it it'll have you know. But I, I on the on the flip side of that, I also always say that the that technology is our you know our greatest savior and and the bane of our existence all at the same time because in the wrong hands, it's dangerous shit. <laughs> Well, you can't live your life in fear. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. not, to, I'm, yeah. I'm not I, no. You, I mean, we. You, you like to joke about me being a luddite. I stay that way for a, for a certain reason, just because. You know, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not afraid of it. A luddite. <laughs> oh yeah, we were me and me and my like girlfriend. Like are, an anti anti technology. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's like uh, the luddites. Uh, like when the machine. Like when they built factories in certain towns. Like the luddites would go in and like burn the factories down in the middle of the night because they're like it's going to kill our you know yeah. jobs and stuff. The, the original. But, yeah. 
But um, you know, I was watching uh, you know, the original, some... the, the original minimum wage advocates. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> I was watching uh some BBC thing about like um life in the mountains, and it was like a thing about people that live in the mountains, and I was watching, and it was like the people that live out in like where like uh you know, the Mongolians and stuff, and I was like you know. When all of the where, where we live, all, we're all when everyone else just goes to fucking shit. These people will be the last people living and breathing air on Earth. <laughs> and it was like these like these people are gonna be the ones making it. The people that live in the mountains and they don't they they only rely on themselves and stuff. It's 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 pretty it's pretty cool. It's a lot easier when you're preparing for it for that long. <laughs> That's why well, no, no, no. Like they're just entire like generations and no, generations. They move out of there because they don't no, want to deal with the saying. politicians, and the politicians find that it's not worth them going up there to bother those people. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean like prepping, prepping. I just meant they've that they've been living life like that. It's the same reason every once in a while you hear about them finding some. I just heard about one recently. Some tribe they found that they didn't know existed up until like very recently. That of these people that have been around for thousands upon thousands of years, <laughs> and just be, yeah. and they're still going because you know they leave live. live a very simplistic life and when natural disasters that would wipe out the technology that would everybody else is so reliant on and causes them to panic they're they they have no idea it's the same principle with like we were talking about before like you know if the country collapsed half the people in, in the midwest may not notice for months you know and not because they're dumb or not because they're ignorant no just because they live their life they do what they got to do they already live a you know they don't rely on the technology to the extent that you know people like us do who can't be anywhere without our cell phones you know um so so <laughs> if michael if you get like a like a, a 40 hour salary job or whatever will they cut all of your pension out no 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 so like I, are you are you actively trying to do that so you can basically a bit be getting paid double um working on it i'm in between school and jobs and stuff like that i don't really know what I want to do, but what I want to do is nothing here that locks me to Rhode Island. Um, um, my friend John, who is and roommate now, who has been on this program before, um, got a place together. We signed a one-year lease, and we are leaving this state to go to New Hampshire this, as soon as this lease is over. So uh, I'm honestly just trying not to tie myself down mm -hmm. while I'm working. trying to sell my house for the same reason. Yeah, right on. <laughs> cool. I have this whole this whole potential gig to go deal cards, and I'm probably not going to do it because I don't want to get stuck here. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. But yeah, I'm. I'm There's I'm, no casinos in New Hampshire. No. Oh wow, I didn't you know that. Do do your research. New Hampshire is not nearly as free as you're led to believe. Yeah, it's yeah. Most of the you know the quote unquote freedom rankings that they have for the states, it actually it doesn't it doesn't end up at the top like most people like the claim no. it does. Marijuana is marijuana is a crime, like it's not even decriminalized. Like a yeah. bulb, like this thing right here would be a misdemeanor. I'd go to jail for a night. Yeah, and lose your job, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, I, yeah. I live in Alabama. I, uh, everything's fucking illegal here. So I live in New York. Everything and everything on top of that is illegal. <laughs> things that things yeah. that have any, things, things, <laughs> things that we don't even know yet. Have they even been introduced in, to the market? Are already illegal here. I'm in Rhode Island. We're, uh, we're not ban marked. everything. <laughs> New Yorkers take um, ban all so, the things so, to a whole so new level. Jeremy, I just want to uh, address what you said uh, earlier about the you know the more moral versus the pragmatic. Sure. Um, I just wanted to clarify one. Oh, did we did we lose Michael? Yeah. yeah. Keep talking. Right. Um, so. I would not, you know, if somebody tells me or somebody asks me what should I do to bring about, you know, the end of the state or, you know, statism or something like that, I would not say go into politics and I would not say <laughs> get on welfare <laughs> or get on food stamps or EBT cards. You know, that's not the first thing I would say. There's many other things. But if somebody has the, you know, if somebody's already, let's say, on those programs, and then they have a you know an epiphany or, and a, and a change of philosophy. Then, to me, it doesn't really matter you know in the end because it's all about the mentality. You know where where are you mentally? You know are you actively promoting statism and actively voting and actively you know you have Bernie Sanders signs on your lawn <laughs> or <laughs> or are you uh, you know stomping on the flag rarely as as your doormat. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's a, it, it, yeah. So so really, you know, the the moral perspective behind those actions, or or the philosophical perspective behind those actions, really is what defines them for me. So you know, yeah. So, so that's why, that, that's why I've come to this realization recently that uh, you know it's, that's why it's so important that we talk to people as individuals and not as groups. You know, like the veterans or you know this. You know, it's so hard. Like we say, the status, but but really, it's so important to just talk to people. As individuals, where are you coming from? You know, and, and to just take apart their history, and you know why they feel what they feel, right? And I mean, there, yeah, there's like people that are making seventy-five thousand dollars a year in their own food stamps, <laughs> so it's well, it's, yeah, but th those those are the people I was referring to either. That yes, that that are there, that are gaming the system, that are that right. can be, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But again, that that also, if you're gonna if. I mean, if it's an anarchist doing that, who, or somebody who claims to be, who's who's doing the bleed the, st the state approach, you know, again, like I said, from a pragmatic side, I, I really, I, I can't see that not happening quicker than the starving the system, you know. I mean, I, I've been on the starve the system uh, route for quite a while, and I've I've been promoting it for a long time. But you know, with, with like conversations like we had with when Lou Fien was on about you know he he talked about the same thing about you know bleeding it, bleeding it, bleeding it, um, because you know unfortunately if if we wanted to happen sooner rather than later, that's the most pragmatic approach. Um, you know, if you want to be you know, take it from a strictly moral side, like I said, I. I I think there's too many variables. It's it's the whole, you know, okay, you don't take anything, okay, but there's certain things you can't avoid. Well, yes, you're being coerced into those. Well, again, you could still get away, with, you know, like I said, the roads mm -hmm. example, you could if you were mm -hmm. willing to take it to that level. But so if you're making a rationalization in that aspect as to, okay, well, I'm being coerced and this makes my life easier in order to obtain more wealth in order to you know propagate myself um that type of thing well technically you're doing it that way too i mean obviously yeah, yeah like michael had said you know or you know i think you said too you know, if you were to join the army now yes you know that would be pretty knowing what you know that'd be pretty messed up <laughs> right, right, right um you know um taking taking even taking jobs now i think but I don't know. I think if the situation arises, like if you need a, some sort of welfare for a little while or, you know, mm -hmm. is it possible that you could get swallowed up like other people and become re reliant on it? Yes. But then you didn't really have the principles you think you did to begin with. So <laughs> you have a whole nother set of issues you need to deal with first. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I see your argument, Dave. But, you know, just like when you brought it up in that in that post a couple of weeks ago um, and I that's why I tried to point out to you about your job and the, the things that we don't think we can avoid right now. But if we really wanted to, like we could be, we could become those people you're talking about, the, the mountain people. We could do stuff like that, you know, um, and then you would not be. Then that's that seems to be that's the one thing after listening to that, um, the debate the other day the to, on the, to, the Tom Woods debate with uh, Robert Murphy and, and uh, Walter Block. The one thing Block said, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't agree with him on a lot of things, but I think the one thing he said is, you know, it's kind of hard to avoid a lot of these things. Like you would have to go out into, you literally would, you'd have to go out into the middle of nowhere and grow everything yourself, right. and, you know, build everything you need yourself um, yeah. because everything is subsidized to some <laughs> extent. And yes, you could say, okay, you're being coerced to people producing the stuff and selling the stuff. They're all being coerced too. Yeah. But it's that if you're going to take, use the moral argument, okay, well, aren't you stripping them and yourself of all mor moral agency if you're saying, well, they're being coerced, so there's no other way? Well, no, there's still, there is another way. You could say, mm -hmm. F the system and do it your own way and risk the consequences. So that possibility is still there. You know that was that was my that was my beef with uh, with Molly with Molyneux um, over the Eric Garner thing when uh, he claimed that Garner was stealing from yeah, that was weird. from the shop owners because <laughs> that was they thing. they had no choice and my that was my argument no they have a choice mm. would it make life harder on them would you know yes but there's still a choice to say that they have no choice but to pay the taxes is just, is simply not true they have a choice. They're choosing to take the they're choosing to take the easier pragmatic route. They're not taking the moral route. 
so you know i think that i think the same the same logic applies here you're not you know to avoid it but you know it's it's nearly impossible right now i'd love to try i'm, I'm working towards it too you know we've talked about it before i took my business more rigorous starting this year i'm trying to get out of my mortgage um you know i would i would prefer to um I, i'd prefer to move out of state um if possible um well sooner rather than later um you know in my ideal situation i would get one of those tiny houses that i could put put on the back of a truck and uh, just drive <laughs> just drive it around from uh you know i'd be like, instead of driving around a winnebago or driving around one of those rvs you know that some people do um, you know, like our, our, our former guest, uh, Ben Stone, <laughs> um, You're driving around your house. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And, and, and like, I'm not putting what he, what him or anybody else does down. Cause that's, that's actually been a dream of mine for a long time, but heck, if I could just drive around a house instead, why not? <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> you know? I, I really would like one of those tiny houses or at least, uh, something, uh, like that. Cause I don't use much of my house right now that I have, like, uh, someone with like two or three kids would it be better for this house? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't mind like a 800 or a thousand square foot place. Uh, something real small. <laughs> something real small. That's the, my, my house right now isn't even that big, man. I live in a nine. What? No. Have you not seen those? Like, no, no, like, I know. Uh, I live in three a or 400 square foot. That's my, nothing. Yeah. It was three or 400, but you said it, you said 800 to a thousand. My, my house right now, my, my main floor is 920 square feet. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm thinking I'm really trying to sell my house uh, and move more north away from the city. Um, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. It's going to be hard to get financing until I get another job. So um, while I'm unemployed, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, around the house work, cleaning it up, start getting it ready to be sold. So. Are you still are, yeah. you, are, you, are you still underwater on the house, or do you have uh, no, some, no, some equity I, building? No, no. When I, I, I mean, I don't want to get into specifics. Well, no, I, but I, mean, I, just, it, I just, I just, I just like, plus like a year, a, a year after I bought it, Jeremy's it went up. For details. Come on. No, no, no. A I year after I, I bought it, it, like it went that. up in, it went up fifty six thousand. Oh, so, you, so you're in good shape that way. So if it, if it did come to that, you could just bounce, you could just sell and bounce out and try to get something else. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's all I was asking because that, that's, I, actually, know, that's, a, know that's you're in a lot like better, you're in a lot better position than I am. So that's not enough detail for Jeremy. If only the, if only the, the government would have allowed all these banks to collapse uh our mortgages would be nothing so yeah you know you know i, I find interesting the term you know when you said financing financing for my for my house or for my mortgage i'm like wait a minute i think the better term would be i can't find a bank to create thousands hundreds yes. of thousands of dollars for me so that i can be indebted to them for something that they did not put any collateral down whatsoever, <laughs> you know, they they just sign, they just made a contract. They sign on the dotted line, and we yeah. will create this money for you that you now owe us plus interest. <laughs> and yeah. the same thing with the credit card companies, right? This no collateral whatsoever, and and uh, it, it's amazing how you know when you imagine how the banking system would look, uh, you know, without all of this counterfeiting and uh, <laughs> and government intervention, it's it would be a different beast altogether. Yeah. Um, but, we lost uh, Michael, guys, if you're listening to this on audio, and he's going to be coming back shortly. We just continued without him, but uh, that's why you haven't heard him talk in a while. But um, so, Jeremy, uh, you, you don't, you're, you're against uh, anyone taking welfare, like, especially if they know about it or? Well, no, like I said, it's if, you know, it, for me, it, it, it's more of it, the pragmatic argument tends to win out more for me. I, and like I said, from a moral standpoint, it, it just seems because you the, it's also you the argument can also be made that you're taking money from a thief which that is you know that was that was blocks argument and to some extent i can see that you are you're taking what you are taking money from a known thief and that to some extent is always a positive i don't know man i i don't have a i don't have a definitive <laughs> position i know i i'm just being honest i i still don't have a definitive position on this and i've been i've been i've been i've been going over this in my head a lot lately because it could just be the stubborn in me but on on i i i'd rather bum for money than be on welfare of and, any, and, of and, any kind. and personally i would too we've talked about this on the on the show before i I, because of my situation with my kids and, and one of them being, you know, quote unquote, special needs, um, I qualify, my, I, my family and I qualify for just about every single program there is, if, if not ones that, again, haven't even been created yet. We probably do. Um, and I don't, I, I take none of it. 
you know, only because my wife and I are not legally married and she has certain control over things and I just, you know, she has the, she had the kids under her insurance um, and then when her company went under um, and, and after her Cobra ran out, you know, because of her physical condition, she had no choice at the, in the, at the time other than to take the, you know, the government assistance for that so because otherwise she'd be in severe pain and wouldn't be able to take care of our kids so it was one of those situations where the moral argument didn't even have a, I was only starting to come to these realizations then but even if I even if it had happened now we'd be hard pressed to be even thinking about the moral argument because you know we'd be out on our ass in a hurry with two kids you know two toddlers and all this stuff so but again I don't do it I could I could take all of this stuff but I choose not to and I choose to bust my ass and try to do it myself as much as I possibly can and I'm try I'm still trying I'm still working my tail off to get them the girls off that off that uh, uh, insurance assistance too because that's the only thing they have take. you seen these ghost towns in like Wyoming and in and, and like Idaho and like uh, Montana that you can buy for like eighteen thousand dollars I've heard like a of whole them. town I've like never the government seen will just sound it to like uh, the, there's some places the government will just pay you to go live well, that's well. This that's the are those state owned or are those federally owned? Uh, I believe they're state owned. Because the last one I heard about, I thought there was one upstate in New York here, maybe, or was it no? I just it, thought it'd be cool to maybe get like fifty, sixty anarchists well, and their I, families, I, I, and I and floated, all of you buy of it. Yeah, I, I floated that idea to people too because you know it's I. I first thought about it when somebody sent me a video of a tiny little place. I think it was in Mon Montana called Max. The town was called Max, and there was only like a hundred or a hundred or less people that lived there, and they didn't have anything. Like they they got rid of they they got rid of their government. They got rid of the they refused to. Oh they yeah, refused, yeah, they, yeah. They refused to put a I saw that video. Yeah. Yeah, they refused to have a police force. They fix their own roads. They do all this stuff like the county or whatever they live in. Those officers will uh, sometimes come in for certain things but they they have like they pretty much live a very anarchic life out there um and when i started i started seeing that i'm like that's great um my wife thought i was crazy when i brought that up but you know um but yeah, yeah I, I think that's, that would that's, be that's my I, problem right now it's like i, I want to move out away, away and everyone if i if if i was not still below, you know underwater in my freaking house <laughs> because I, I I made such a horrible decision with this. Um, I'd be I'd be out in a hurry. I'd love I'd love to. I, we should you know. Hey, if anybody listening is is interested in doing something like this, let us know. Uh, maybe we can get together a little group and we can try to find something like this. And uh, I'm not totally opposed to it, especially if I can fish somewhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm not either, man. I mean, I I, I mean I, I would have no problems living in Montana or anything like that. Oh, at all. I mean, especially I, I if I'm not having any problems and. I can live life how I want. Danilo? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I would uh, definitely be interested in something like that as well. I think it's in Nebraska. Uh, yes, that video. Yes, you're right. Right? You. Nebraska. Yeah, because after I, I, right. after I saw that video, uh, like last year, I think I, I saw it for the first time, I immediately subscribed to the guy's channel. And none of his other videos are about anarchy. <laughs> like that's it, the only it, one. <laughs> it wasn't. It, I don't even think that was, that one was about anarchy. The person well, who he was just showing. Yeah, he was just showing the the lack of government. Yeah, uh, the the person. In this town. The person who said it to me originally wasn't an anarchist either. They just thought they okay. thought I would they thought I would like it because of the content, and I was like, hey, yeah. wow, this is really interesting. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He was saying about cool... how they, they they fill their own potholes. You know, you know, he's like, you see a pothole, you just stop by the side of the road and you fill it up. <laughs> yeah, people people drive around and, with shovels in their trunk. And he was yeah, and he was saying like you know, within a hundred years they've only had like one bank robbery. <laughs> and uh, even that was like kind of tame. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, rem yeah, I remember yeah. seeing this. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, and it's and they, and they're not even and these are people who are never even as far as I can tell. I tried to I tried to look into it even more. Like I first saw it maybe I want to say at least two years ago I saw that, um, mm -hmm. but like they they. they the, from what I could gather from the video and, and the, the little bit of information I could dig up online about it, uh, you know, none of them seem to be like, you know, died in the wool anarchists or anything like that. They no. were just you know, trying to live their life and just didn't <laughs> just want to be bothered. Lives. And, <laughs> you know, that's, I, I, you know, it's, I mean, for me, obviously, I would need to be someplace either near doctors or 
that we would have to have a doctor in our group, <laughs> um, you know, for the, for the kids and stuff like that, you know, obviously, I mean, I'm not as worried about myself, but well, know. what you need is like someone who can fly at like a, like a smaller plane. Yeah. A pilot, then, a pilot, a pilot or two. Would and definitely if be you bought, handy. if you bought enough land, you could just build an airfield and if there was a problem or like you needed to see a doctor that was like five hours away, you could make it a 10 minute flight. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. All right, we got to get working on this. This is a good plan. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> we we will buy a town. Damn it! That is. I mean, I'm down. I anybody, anybody, down. anybody. From now on, anybody who wants to donate to the seeds, you can. Uh, we'll set up a separate fund, and uh, <laughs> we can start. We can start building. We can start we'll start our more. own uh, free state project. Uh, you there know, you uh, out in the middle of nowhere, where, you know, the feds are basically going to have to come out and stop us. <laughs> Yeah, the no state project. You know that'll be us. <laughs> the no state project. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, definitely. That's a that, that's a that's a good idea. Um, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, the uh, Asheville people. You know, the the Free State Project. You know, there's, there's a couple of uh, little enclaves of you know volunteers and anarchists. Some people actually, you know, they they're like, you know what, leave leave the country altogether. You know, like the um, you know the ex expatriates and uh, you know flee the uh, the sinking Titanic type of thing um which which is uh, you know makes sense also but uh, but i know if i do stay here that uh, the toilet paper party will be at uh, jeremy's house so <laughs> i'm gonna beeline there <laughs> I, I i really like i know like you guys always say oh we're not in new york city and i know that but you still should get out of the state of I, new I, york as i've said i just said it earlier my goal is to get out of this state it absolutely is i want i want out of here yesterday unfortunately because I have kids, it's not completely within my control at the moment. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. I mean, so, you have hurdles. Yeah. So. You know. I mean, uh, I, I, I've I, always I've always tossed around the idea, like uh, maybe like five or six of my friends, we all buy like a uh, uh, houses out in the middle of you know uh, out somewhere where we kind of you know create a support group and all of us live close to each other, but. You know, I, that would be cool to have like at least like have a bunch of people just buy a bunch of land out somewhere and build houses, especially if it was like tiny houses or um, or, or stuff. And because you you think about this, like um, if I had no mortgage right now, man, I would have I would have had so much money in my savings account, it would be sickening. Yeah, I, uh... <clears throat> that's the past. That's the past we're talking about. I can't change. And then you know, <laughs> like change. everyone's telling me that, like you know, like. Um, like let's say I can't get a job and I can't pay the mortgage. Well, I could just move out of the house and HUD it out, and be making money off the house. <clears throat> that that HUD that person yeah. that person paying Section Eight or HUD or whatever could be paying my mortgage for me, which yeah. is just a whole another level of fuckery <laughs> that I don't really want to talk about. Well, that brings you back to your moral dilemma. So yes, but you well, know, not really. It's the fascist bank getting paid by the fascist government. <laughs> And I'm getting, I'm keeping the property uh, <laughs> so, wow. that's rented from the fascist government. I mean, it's, <laughs> so it's, very, it's, very con it's very convoluted. <laughs> exactly. So you think about it, it's like, what the fuck is even really going well, on why, here? Why anymore? would you even have to go the HUD route, though? Couldn't you just rent it out privately? I could. Yeah, I could. So. I could probably, you know, I had a friend who uh, had a really, really high end paying job in the medical field and, uh, as soon as Obamacare hit, he lost that job like instantly, and um, he uh, he uh, moved out of his house, and it was a big, nice, big old house. He was making like three hundred grand a year, and he had obviously not been saving and doing the smart thing, like taking that three hundred grand and like just buying a house outright with it, which which is what I would have done. If I, I mean, if I get a job making that much money, I'm buying a house outright the first year. Don't do it, man. Why? Like you buy a house for a hundred grand, boom, it's paid off. You're not, you don't have any more mortgage. You, still, you could retire in like ten years. But you don't. But we already. We. You just established it a, a couple of minutes ago. You don't actually own it. So oh, yeah. why, under why circumstance, put, why, uh, like why, under the, well, yeah, the hope why, that so you keep why, it. Well, why put? Why put? Why put that kind of money? That well, I guess since it's going to do, the money's going to devalue anyway. You might as well use it on something, but. Might as well get know. land and assets. I, I don't know. I guess just from my position, if I was able to flip my house right now and actually make make some money on it enough to go somewhere else, um, I mean, you could even I, make I, I would, if, even I would, if you I made would, even, be, that would be fine, right? Uh, I get, you would I get, at least I'm get the mortgage almost, out from I'm, under I'm, you. I'm, I'm almost at that point. I'm I'm almost at, at break even because I could probably get a little more money for the stuff that I've that 
you know, because the assessment I get is from the town. So they obviously want to, you know, they keep it as high as possible. Yeah. Well, they keep it as high as they can get away with so they can collect as much taxes as they can. But they, you know, they can only go so high, you know, because there's um, other factors there, too. But I mean, like I said, for me, if, if I could, I'm almost at that point. But if I could do it right now, I don't think. And like I said, even if I made money and I could or even if I had the situation you were describing where I could purchase a house outright, I don't think I would do it. I think I would yeah, purchase. I, think I, would I, th it. I think I might purchase. The most I might do is purchase land in a state that has. Florida you know, has no property tax. Well, yeah, whatever has either zero or like the most ridic or ridiculously low and, you know, whatever other like. Um, whatever other laws I would have to deal with would be, you know, the, the most minute. Um, I may, you know, but that if, if I'm going to do that, then I, I think I'd rather try to figure out a way to do our what we were talking about just before about getting a whole bunch of us to do something like that. And, uh, you know, I mean, we've I, I, I've joked about it before, but I, I think it's something that it should be seriously considered on, only because how much how more can we practice what we preach than doing something like that you know like that's that's taking the leading by example thing to a whole new level that's actual that's that's becoming you know the actionable part of agorism that that you know that michael had, was talking about earlier how you know I, I don't know if that was on or off or off the show um but how agorism is the oh no it was how agorism is you know and cap uh philosophy and action um that's doing that's doing it <laughs> that would be yeah. doing it so it would be great let me let me tell you my my wife's uh, slightly depressing um, retort for that um, concept of like moving into a you know a place with other anarchists and volunteers. <laughs> she she says to me, um, well, from the government's perspective, that's awesome because if they just want to get rid of all the anarchists, they just drone bomb that place, and they're gonna get rid of all of you at once. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> how can you think like that? But I guess, I mean. I mean, I, I, like, like you know, Dave, you said you can't live in fear, you know. So, you know, you you find a bunch of, you know, well, a, a bunch of other people, <laughs> like-minded people. You live, you know, you live as free as you can. You know, you make a living for yourself. I mean, what else can there you was a guy that do? started yeah. his own country in Australia somewhere. Um, he found some big loophole hole in in the law and declared himself prince and in Australia. Uh, yeah, yeah, he declared himself prince and like uh, they can't. They can't beat him in the courts, and it would look really bad if they like went over there and like forcibly armed removed him. And he's been doing this for like thirty years. He started oh, yeah. his own country, one, essentially. One, one one guy is actually easier to get. To no, no, no. He's got like uh, three or four hundred people that live. Oh, there. really? Yeah, yeah. It's a huge area. It's well, a bunch are, of farmers. They didn't want to pay the wheat tax. We'll, we'll have to put a link to that. Something about that in the, in the show notes. I, I I'd like to see that. I've never, I've never heard of that one. You, you oh, know yeah. what the name of that? The name of that is? Uh, it's like Prince Something's. Uh, it's actually a, a, a the UN. It's he's part of the UN. <laughs> <laughs> I like, wonder why yeah, he, yeah, like he, got, uh, he, he didn't call himself a king. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Was, uh, well, if he called himself a king, prince, it would be trying enough. to. Yeah, it was some kind of weird prince law. Like you couldn't. <laughs> It's like a Prince Law. <laughs> seriously, it was like I can't explain it because I can't remember the whole. Yeah, it was a big loophole with the Prince Law, and I guess we're just gonna give up on Michael. I I, I don't yeah. know why the um. Yeah, that's a couldn't, bummer. He couldn't he couldn't handle the moral pragmatic argument. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I I'm recording, but it's it looks terrible. Um, so we I might have to just do this whole show audio, no video. Yes, yeah, but right. let, let me ask you. So, what do you guys think of the Liberland? Uh, experiment i don't know if we talked about that i think it would be a great little tax haven for a lot of people yeah i i haven't i mean i i heard about it i, I read a couple of things i don't even know where, i don't know where they stand at the present moment i mean it, it, again if you if you can find a place that you can try to pull that off and you're willing to take the risks involved why not you know um, that's an, another one for me, unfortunately, that comes down to like the pragmatic arguments because, you know, if I didn't have my kids and stuff like that, I'd probably be out there trying stuff like that right now. But I, I, right. I, applaud, I applaud anybody who can and is trying yeah. that. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with the guy with his whole constitution and everything. I know. But, uh, I, that, that's kind of confusing me, too. He says he's an, he's an anarcho-capitalist and like we have a constitution. Well, I don't, I, the, well, I don't know. I don't know. 
I heard him. What he? Like, wait a minute. I, I have heard you actually on... read it so far? Like, have you read the Constitution? Basically, it is impossible to amend. Yeah. Like I... once they all agree on it, it's going to be basically impossible. Like, isn't it? Isn't like, that the history of every Constitution? Though? No, 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 no. Like literally, like it's written. It's written in there. Like it is impossible to change. Like you need. Like basically, every citizen and every assemblyman, which is basically a congressman, has to agree upon it. Like. In like a ninety nine percent agreeance on a change, so they have yeah. to have not only do they have to have a popular vote where everyone agrees on it. There's no in the no. There's zero people in the no. So 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 if, so if that if that country goes down in flames due to its you know rampant socialism and welfare, then everyone's gonna be like, look at that, anarcho capitalist doesn't work. <laughs> well, know? it has no there's no socialism are... in the uh, in the thing, and all the taxes are voluntary. Well, yeah, but they don't even actually have anything yet. yet exactly. They? I mean, it's all it's all yeah. you know, basically it's, hearsay. No, it's. I mean, it's what I, again. You know, he. I. I heard. I heard the guy interviewed. Uh, who, Berwick had him on, I think, right? And uh, Jeffrey he, Berwick and, and Tom Woods too. Oh yeah, yeah. Tom Woods had him on too, and I don't. Yeah. I, I. He seems like another one of those guys who didn't really know what an anarcho-capitalist was until anarcho-capitalists started contacting him and saying, hey, we like what you're doing, let me talk to you, you know, like, <laughs> he was just doing what he thought was liberty, and, you know, uh -huh. he, he took an opportunity and seized it. He found this piece of land that's supposedly not actually claimed at the moment, because who, what are, what, who's the two countries that it's in between? Croatia, Croatia is it? Croatia and Serbia, I think? Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's, in the, it's in the, somewhere in the, yeah. The war, the war zone between the two countries that's technically unclaimed yeah. at the moment. And again, if if you can do something like that and you're willing to take the associated risks, depending on where in the world that piece of land happens to be and which violent, uh, you know, protection racket is claiming ownership over it at the time, if you're willing to take those risks, then damn it, man, go for it. I mean, again, that's it's because... the same. It's t it's it's taken it's taken these these principles and putting them into action. And it's sh it's showing it's giving us it's giving people the opportunity to see what can be accomplished, and uh, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Takes real uh, cojones. And, and actually, I'm I'm also pretty interested in in seeing the sky steading and, and the sea steading. Yeah, uh, you know things. I've, no, I, <laughs> you know? I that's another one I heard about. I heard about it somewhere, and then I heard the one guy uh, on Tom Woods talk about it. Um, and I've read some other pieces. Uh, I haven't looked too too much into the sky setting. I've I've looked more at the sea sea setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sea setting makes a little more sense to me. <laughs> yeah, and, but and again, an, a great idea if you can yeah. make it work. I mean, I think that guy, the the one who's who has the, I guess the big company that's that's kind of you know running the show for that right now. They're mm -hmm. still they're as far as I remember, they're still working with the existing governments of wherever these little cities are set up. Because they mm -hmm. they have to be within a certain distance in order to have you know all certain amenities and be able to be, be able to reach certain things. So they end up being they're not in international waters. They they end up being in waters that are technically are quote unquote owned by a certain you know nation state. Mm -hmm. um, so Michael just messaged me on uh, <laughs> Facebook and said he got droned, but he still survived. Okay, as long as he's alive. <laughs> That's right. all that matters. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have to bring we'll have to bring him back at another time, hopefully. Uh, I, I don't know. He said his internet went out, and so I'm waiting on him to respond. But I mean, we're we're having a good discussion without him. And uh, if he wants to, if he, if we're, I, th I think we could go a little bit longer. And if if he's still, if he can come back on, then sh so be it. So, but mm -hmm. you know, this has been a fun talk. Uh, you know, I I'm vehemently opposed to any kind of welfare. I mean, you guys probably already know that. But you know, it's like all these things it's like the almost how like the conservatives don't realize they're on they're communist it's like you don't realize how much welfare you actually receive you know in most states you have to make so much money before you're not actually getting more back than you give yeah um uh, if you're paying taxes yeah i mean like i said i i i do fairly well for myself considering the business i'm in but you know I, I still qualify for everything because, you know, with all with the inflation tax and everything else that's jacked up, I still am considered not making enough money to be above a certain line. So I qualify for all these things. And it's, you know, it's it's, you know, that then it becomes a, a matter. It does become a matter of principle, whether what you you know, what you're willing to do about it. And I'm going to fight, you know, I'm, I'm with, you know, that's the thing, man. Like I said, in in in, the, in not just in theory, in practice. I agree with you because that's what I do. I purposely I, I avoid these things that I could be taking, but 
but that's also because I've taken the, the starve the beast mentality for a long time. That's why I, that's why I fight the, uh, you know, I, I, I fight, I, I fight with the traffic courts all the time. I refuse to give them money. I, you know, and I, I, I've been dealing with the tax issues and all that stuff. And I, I, I try to avoid the state at all costs. Um, you know, and it's, it's also another reason that I want to get out of my mortgage and want to get out of the prop the ridiculous amount of property taxes, which sadly are the town I live in on Long Island is actually one of the lowest in Nassau County. And it's still eight plus grand a year. Um, you know, it's like, <laughs> um, cause I, I hear people in other States and like, Oh, I pay so much to talk about like eight, $800, a thousand dollars. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you have no idea. You know, and, yeah, and I was my, just looking at a house the other day and like the back taxes for five years was only like three hundred dollars. Yeah, like, what? I, I know. I'm, like my family lives two towns away from me, but just because they live closer to the water and they have a house that's no bigger, if not smaller than mine is like 14 or 13. <laughs> How do you uh, even live like that's ridiculous? Well, again, people are just so used to it that they just keep. Well, and at that point, you know, the house is owned because my, you know, my grandmother's been in it for since the '60s, um, so technically it's owned. Um, so all, you know, they don't have to pay a mortgage; they just have to pay their property taxes, you know, which which is ridiculous. It's it, yes, exactly. But that was like, that, like I said, that goes back to my. That's other basically point. a mortgage. Well, yeah, but that that goes back to my other point about why buy something if you can avoid it now, like knowing what you know now. If you had the opportunity to buy something, I mean. It, to me, just to me, 80, 90 bucks a year uh, for what that house I was looking at. I mean, you, I could literally go off the side of the interstate and beg for that money. <laughs> no, <laughs> literally, I, I, I could pay the property. And with, that, that. with that beard, you, you might be quite successful. Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Look, just just don't just don't play with it. Don't groom it for a couple of days. Some, you know, hang out outside. Some bird, some birds will start living in it. Oh, and my gosh. I just it'd be like that family guy episode. You know, Peter's got the three little chicks living in it. <laughs> yeah. And they declare his beard like a, a habitat reserve or something. Yes. <laughs> um, so. so 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 going back to uh, uh, Jeremy, your business, I was just thinking that Dave and I are uh, would be, you know, greedy capitalist advocates in theory but uh jeremy is the greedy capitalist pig in action so so that's uh that's i think that's a plus for you <laughs> you're actually living it so <laughs> well yeah well and it's funny because i i don't i don't identify myself as an ancap i did for a little while as michael was saying earlier i also don't either i'm more of a panarchist these days and you know I, as we've all we've discussed many times before i prefer the term abolitionist but it's funny because we've discussed this that and a lot of other people too that a lot of so-called ancaps are not doing very well for themselves um, right. You know, I'm somebody who doesn't identify as an ANCAP, but I'm I'm doing it. I'm putting it into action. I'm doing what I can to try. You know, it's not easy. You know, I've I've said it before. I got luck, very lucky with what I do, but um, it's possible. You know, we talked about we I've talked about that with you, Dave, about you know your current situation. And yes, it's you know like you said, <coughs> it's not it's tough and like what you you know type of things you would want to do, you may not be possible now, but. I don't know. For me, again, I, I try to see opportunities and things. And yeah, you're in a crappy spot right now because your your personal situation. But if you want, you take it as an opportunity. You know, maybe you just maybe you 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 spend the next month or two really trying to figure out what it is you want to do, what it is you think you can make work. You know, feel the market out for certain things. See what see what you can do, and see what is see, find a need and find if it's something that you're willing to fill. And in the meantime, if you have to get a job, get a job that you know you're not going to commit to. Get something that you're ju literally just to put food on the table for the time being, um, and, and and work towards it. You know, is it a lot of work? Is there risk involved? Absolutely, but that's life, man. It sucks, you know. I mean, you know, I, I've said before when I started my business, I I not only got lucky with the timing. You know, I also had a family that was willing to that said that they told me straight out they would they would spot me for a year. They would they would cover my butt for a year in case things didn't work out. And then after that, I was, on. you know, if it didn't work out, then, I, you know, try something else. And uh, I got lucky and my business took off in less than eight months. And I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I want to start uh, growing uh, like organic mushrooms, like shiitake, uh, stuff like that. But I thought you, you, know, I thought you had been doing that already. I, no, I, I haven't. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I haven't. I, I've got a uh, basically a grow house down in my basement for that, but I just uh, I need uh, a little bit more money than I could want yeah. to invest in something that I have really no experience in. 
So I don't I don't know if there's there's no or, there's no marketplace for it either. So I'd have to be creating that market in um in, in where I live. So I that that I you know I I want to do that a uh, big time, but uh you know maybe I should just look into every avenue for that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I, I should just go full blown bleed the state and see if I can get like a agro loan and 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 get all this other stuff. But you know who knows. Yeah, well, that, that's a possibility. <laughs> I, I just so, don't want to incorporate. And I don't want to pay tax. No, well, I mean, again, that that depends on where you are. I mean, I I got rid of my LLC and I did it in well in a, in a fashion that only I could do. Um, <laughs> because I refuse to keep paying the fees to the because in New York I you you need a registered registered agent to uh, be in charge of your LLC and uh, you know pay them a fee every year and I just refused to pay them this year and they kept sending me letters and I kept calling their office and nobody ever answered and when somebody finally answered after months and months of me calling I ripped into them like I've told you people many times I don't want your services anymore and they kept trying to tell me that I couldn't run my business it was going to affect how I run my business I'm like I don't need an LLC I don't want your limited liability and they couldn't deal with that and then finally they told me that there was no way other than me going to the, the Secretary of State of New York myself to have my LLC canceled um, there was no other way about it I would have to do that and I said I have no interest in talking to the Secretary of State of New York and then I got nasty with this one woman on the phone, and because of that, I received the phone call an hour later saying, "Yeah, we're we are now severing ties with you." And I said, "Well, that's funny. You told me that wasn't possible. <laughs> we're severing ties with you. You were very unprofessional." <laughs> I'm like, "Really? I asked that's nicely. All it took. That's all it I asked nice. Yeah, I I asked nicely for months. I left message upon message. I, I wrote <laughs> email upon email. I wrote." physical letter upon physical letter as nice as I could I no longer wish to do business with you I have no need for your services please stop sending me these 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 invoices because I'm not going to pay it I don't want your service for this year and they just ignored me for months on end and then when I finally you know called her some choice words um, all of a sudden their policy changed and uh, yeah now my LLC was canceled by the state of New York <laughs> Um, Cour courtesy is only respected and appreciated in the private sector, right? I tried, I tried. So, so you don't need, so you don't need, you don't need those things, Dave. Again, I mean, some states are a little more of a pain in the butt about it, but uh, I'm somebody who pushes the pushes the envelope up here in New York. So, if I can get away with things up here, you shouldn't have a problem down there. <laughs> but again, uh, that's that's something. If it's, if you really want to do it, uh, what's up? So, so Jeremy, I think uh, I, I think to be fair, you, I think you're being a bit disingenuous for the for the audience. I think you should really share with the audience, you know, your how you're um, enforcing your protectionist laws and, and sending your lobby of <laughs> your army of yes. lobbyists to the to the Nassau County uh, the, the, <laughs> county the dog, the, the, the dog walking lobby. We're a powerful group, man. You um, erect a barrier of entry, or, or you know, to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I actually got a crash course in economics when I started my business because I got to see without even realizing what I was seeing at the time, me enter a market that was very underdeveloped in this area um, at the right time. And then two years later, the whole system collapsed, you know, the, the reset, the great recession or whatever they call it these days, you know, began. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, my market became flooded with people who mm -hmm. saw what people like me were doing and said, oh, I got to get in on this. I can do that. That's 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 easy. I can do these type of things. And they tried to undercut me. A lot of people, you know. Oh, really? Uh, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People undercut me left and right. And uh, to this day, I have I have kept the same prices with the exception of raising the price of my walks. Um, only because of the travel time. When get when gas first went up to four bucks in two thousand and eight, mm. um, I raised the prices for that. And other than that, my prices have been the same. Everything else has been exactly the same for ten years. Um, and when, like I said, when the recession hit, people were undercutting me left to right, and I I lost a couple of clients that weren't that invested in me, but enough of them stuck it out, and most of those people ended up collapsing because they just tried to jump on an opportunity without having. Um, the foresight to re recognize that this is not as easy as a business as it looks. It's not, you know, it's not something you can have another job and do at the same time. Um, so I got to see, I got to see what a competition in a relatively unfettered market can, what what can happen. And ten, you know, eight years after that, I'm still standing. 
and I did nothing but continue to provide the best possible service I could at the continued prices that I guaranteed from the beginning and just kept going and kept going. You know, I mean, heck, I haven't even I haven't paid for advertising in seven years. So, so basically what you're saying is, is you're in uh, an unrestrained monopoly and, and you ought to be broken up by the Nassau yes. County government. <laughs> Yes, I, I'm a horrible monopoly. I'm, I'm, one, I'm, one, I'm, one of, I'm one of like ten guys, ten people around you. That, that they're going to be, they're gonna be te teaching about you know Jeremy's example of of why the Nassau County government was so successful in breaking up this vicious monopoly, yeah. <laughs> cornered the market, destroyed competition. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's I, hilarious. I still, I, I still hence, have fun. hence the hence the creation of the department of what? <laughs> Fe, K, I don't know, canines or felines. Yeah. <laughs> department of animals. I don't know. Yes, the department of animals. <laughs> the department of fair business practices. <laughs> yeah, they already have that. They they just don't pay attention to it. Um, but no, I mean, but in all serious, I mean, I again, I there's still competition there, but all those fly by nighters came and went. And like I said, that was a crash course for me. And that's, you know, no, the government has to create another they have to create a competing company for you because, you know, they can't we can't have just we one can't person. Have these, these, these we need, you know, we need socialized dog walking. That's what we need. <laughs> Oh people God! Can you imagine how people are paying? I don't like this dog. Money. Call the cops. <laughs> it, we, we, it has to happen. It has. That's the next step, you know. So uh, when that day, dog, how's your dog gonna get walked? I mean, <laughs> let's ask. This is the real, the basic question. You can't, you can't just trust anybody to walk your dog. You they need to either. trust a state bureaucrat. With, see, okay? it's funny because we, we were. Duh. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, well, we were talking before about you know the the ridiculous amount of laws here in New York. That that this is one of the few ones that I actually fall through the cracks on because there's not any laws or for or against what I do. It's one of the few. But there's no dog. There's no dog walking license yet. <laughs> no, there is not a there no yet. I, I've been waiting. Yeah. <laughs> I've been wait. I've been waiting for it. But no, to this day there is no. I mean, you know, I I get my insurance and my 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 bonds and all that stuff. But no, there because I actually looked for one because I was a wow. hardcore. I was a hardcore status when I started my business, and I actually went and asked, is there a license I need to get? I was that conditioned. I didn't even wait to be told. I actually went and asked oh. because because I was but but uh, for I I wasn't thinking of it in those terms. I mean, obviously, in the back of my head, I just automatically assumed because that's how I'd been raised. But right, right. I was actually coming at it from uh Again, uh, it, I was ignorant of economics at the time, but I was actually putting things into action that I can now explain and go, oh, yeah, that actually was the right thing. I went out and, and, and surveyed the field and saw that, number one, there wasn't too much competition, but it was also extremely female driven. It was mostly most of the people who did this type of stuff. It was all females. Mm. And I, my mind went to work and I said, OK, automatically, most people will tend to trust a female with their house key, with their you know, cleaning their house, taking care of their kids. It's just, you know, instinctively, most people will, you know, if you have two choices and they're relative, you know, they're equally qualified in those situations, most people will naturally trust a woman more. And I understood that. And I said, okay, what I have to do is go out and be as professional as I possibly can. So I went out and took, I was, I was finding classes and like these little certificate programs that basically meant nothing, but it was just a way to say, hey, I've went out and taken this course and I've learned this and I have this certificate to prove it. And I was driving like three, like not yeah, like it was ridiculous, but like three hours out of state. I mean, actually, because of the industry I'm in, they, they, it actually, they all actually were privatized things. It was, I wasn't getting any state licenses or any state certificates or anything. They were all private wow. institutions. Wow. But, it was, but that was just my thought process. Like, okay, I'm gonna, like I was driving to PA for, for like three hours just to go for one afternoon and then turning around and driving back three hours. Like I did this, oh a, bunch of, I did this a bunch of times my first two years. And, uh, and I went, and I went to, to the people I knew in the, in the town government and said, is there a license? Do I have? Can I get a license? I mean, how much does it cost? Like I was like literally like, and I please wanted to, make the license, slap seriously. me with a fee, something. <laughs> I I wanted to do everything possible to follow the law, um, but also present myself as well. I don't let I anyone wa walk my imaginary dog unless they've been regulated by the state to be approved to be a dog walker, because there's such you need so many qualifications for that job that, you know, I can't. It's like almost like an electrician or a plumber. You know, like, you don't want just anybody walking your dog, you know? No, no, you don't. <laughs> you want somebody that's went to puppy college. Yes. 
I, I, I learned about this uh, this economic uh, principle recently called monopolistic competition. Uh, Tom Woods was talking about it on, a, on, a, on an episode a couple of episodes ago, and it, it's kind of interesting idea. Like it's like you know Jeremy has a monopoly on Jeremy's services. Yes. <laughs> Nobody else can do Jeremy's services. Therefore, Jeremy is an evil monopolist, right? <laughs> we need other Jeremy's, identical Jeremy's, to compete with Jeremy so that he's <laughs> not an evil monopolist. Like, it's such a weird concept. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, I, I listen to that show, too. There's, there's monopolies yeah. everywhere. You can't avoid them. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, Tom Woods has a monopoly on Tom Woods-type speeches, right? Yeah. And he's... He's actually limiting his product because he's not doing all the speeches that he could do, you know, because he sleeps. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, exactly. I almost never turn down jobs, but I do occasionally because I need to sleep and I have kids. <laughs> right. You know, so, you know, we all we make those choices. That I, that was a good episode, though. I, was, I, I hadn't yeah. heard that term either, but it may. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's true, though. You if you know. Uh, that's the thing, you know. Like I said, people don't understand. I mean, we're joking about, you know, the the licenses and stuff like that. And I, I'm yeah. sure at some point somebody in in the in the local or the or the county government will get it in their head that we need to, people like me need to be licensed. <laughs> uh, but uh, but for now, like I said, I'm lucky that that's one of the one of the reasons that I'm not dying as much as I as I as I could be to get the hell out of here. I mean, I want to get the hell out of here, but because my my business is is still fairly unregulated um i can uh i can take advantage of that here so i do <laughs> it's, like, it's like i can imagine them thinking you know think of all the all the puppies and and kittens that die because they're you know because these amateur you know dog walkers um are not feeding them you know and then they're like wait a minute the police kill more i oh, forget about them no it's these <laughs> people these people need to be licensed <laughs> yeah so, uh, do you guys have any like closing statements uh, about uh, our topic at can? I, I know uh, Michael left, and and we were gonna kind of bounce things off on him, but um, you know, I'm sorry he got disconnected, guys. If you're listening, you're enjoying enjoying our banter, but we we tried to we tried to keep the 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 the, the, the throttle on and and keep the the ship in the, in the same direction. But uh, um, is there anything you guys want to maybe like say, and then we could wrap up? You go, Jerry. <laughs> oh um, well, I mean to get back to the topic, I, I mean I I think I, I I'm I'm still stuck. Like I said, I I, I don't see this as a black and white issue. Um, I I really, you know, I, I I guess I still have to flesh it out a little bit more for myself because, like I said, the you know when you it, from a from a you know, from an oversight position, it seems like it could be cut and dry. But then the closer you get, it's like, OK, well, what arguments are we using against it? And like, you know, some of the ones you brought up, like the, the legitimizing of the state. Well, for me, I have a hard time, de you know, delineating between legitimizing the state by taking money now versus using all these services that, yes, there's coercion involved, but you could not do it if you really wanted not to do it um so you know are aren't you using a rationalization there in order to in order to make use of those services well then and again because the, the legitimacy question it, it comes down more to the eyes of the statist versus the eyes of us because people like us already see the state as illegitimate but it's those millions of people that still believe it to be legitimate that are the problem. So as long as they see it as legitimate, um, I, I think that using that legitimate, you know, the legitimization argument to me, I, I don't think is very cut and dry. Like I said, because you have to take that other side into account. Um, you know, the other one, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I think unfortunately, it, it. This is a this this is more of a pragmatic argument, um, and and again it it may be rationalization to say that, but for me it it just seems like, you know, I won't do it personally, and I'm doing everything I can to avoid doing it personally. But, you know, I'm not going to begrudge somebody who runs into a situation where they have to use it temporarily, or somebody who you know like Michael or like Donnie you know that was already in the system already receiving this money already set to receive this pension before they came to these conclusions Be, you know and the reason being because 
the state will be bled dry a hell of a lot quicker than it will starve. Um, and that, again, unfortunately, that's just a reality that we cannot avoid. Um, but, you know, like I said, I, it's just not cut and dry enough for me. And I'm just going to live my life the way that I believe it to be moral, you know, and I see it how I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take. But I can't turn around to somebody and tell them that they shouldn't or that they can't, you know, so. Yeah. No, I see what you're saying. I, and I... I somewhat agree on a pra on pragmatic grounds mm. uh but on, on moral grounds like i was saying earlier like none of us would be begging for anything like this to exist <clears throat> well no but but again that's not the i don't think i, I think that's a separate issue because the moral argument again yes i from an overview I, li I like to think and i did for a long time that it's very cut and dry yeah you you don't it, it's stolen money you don't want stolen money but Unfortunately, as much as I didn't want to, that that argument from Walter Block kind of made sense to me. You know, Walter you Block is like I've flushed him down the toilet. Well, I, I, I've but lost. again, but but again, that that one particular argument that you know you are it's just not logically consistent, in my opinion. Okay, but I'm not. Yeah, but I'm talking about the specific argument because again, yeah. that that has nothing to do with his individual. You know, with him as an individual, and the argument that, well you are stealing from a thief and stealing from a thief can never be immoral that act itself can never be immoral and you know i i kind of see that you know it's kind of hard it's kind of hard to argue against that that it's then you know, like the the indians could like start coming like not like to use a little so sophistry like the indians could like start just killing anybody and start taking back land and it would it would be moral for them to do so because that land was stolen from them so like it's there's a lot of gray area here well i don't i don't well killing i think that comes down to, to just hey get off this land or we're gonna kill you hey we're not getting off the land okay we're going to kill you well yeah <laughs> but they don't yeah but they would uh, yeah I, I i see what you're saying but I, but i mean that's why i i don't know i i think that comes more down to the the same type of moral argument, you know, the, the Larkin Rose, Chris Cantwell type of thing of when is it okay to kill a cop, you know, mm. because morally it may be, you know, from a moral standpoint, it may be moral to do so now, but it's definitely not moral. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm still waiting for the video, when is it okay to kill your mailman? <laughs> <laughs> well, if Cantwell's ever oh, that junk it, mail, you, you know what, you know how much trees you're... <laughs> well, no, it's like, uh, you know, it, w how many deaths could have been prevented by killing every Nazi messenger. But the messenger was just doing his job, right? He was just delivering messages. The mail carrier for the Nazis was doing just as much harm as a soldier. He might have not been pulling the trigger, but he, he, was, wasn't, he, wasn't he was facilitating that. that. Yeah, but again, that... that if it, all right, so if I have a gun right here and there's someone back here un uh, reloading magazines and handing them to me, they're just as culpable. Well, yes, but they're not pulling the trigger, but handing, but but physically handing you the bullets to shoot people in the time versus bringing somebody their TV guide. I can't see those. No, no, I understand. <laughs> I understand. No, no. And pragmatically, I agree with that on all grounds. Well, no, I don't like even. It, I don't even. I don't. I don't even know if you can make that moral argument that they're the same. I I, it, I, I don't see that. You could. You could. Yeah. But we because again, maybe that's because, a different topic for another show. Well, yeah, but but that's to me that's the same thing as so, you know. So okay, just, we're all we're so, all culpable because we know now, especially now, people like us are even more culpable because we know what's going on and we still partake in certain things that again we could avoid if we really wanted to. So doesn't that make us just as culpable then? If you're going to go that far down the line to the pa to the to the letter carrier. So, yeah. so Jeremy, what would you say about the the guy who cleans the drones and and the guy who you know the medic and the you know who who runs out into the field and and tends to the soldier the wounded soldiers? <laughs> would you, would you say they're culpable or complicit? They're complicit, yes. But let, that's what I'm saying. I, I think we I think we to a lot to a lot of things. I think we all even us. I think we are to a certain extent. So that that's why I, I think sometimes the. As much as I try to be, you know, I try to be as consistent as possible, but I, that for, for reasons like that, I see it as sometimes the pragmatic argument is the, the north, the is, north, is the better one to focus on because it's, it, it has, you know, you're gonna, you, you, you're gonna survive a lot longer using that argument. The north won the war by blowing up all the railroads. 
so, so they stopped the flow of, of, of essentially packages and, and materials. So, I mean, if you want to stop a war, you don't fight the soldiers. Well, the, the soldiers just em, embattles and emblazes a nation. When you when you when you go and crush their complete and you destroy someone's complete way of you know feeding themselves, that the the, the soldiers don't, they don't matter anymore. Well, yeah, this is true, but that's a lot. That's also a hell of a lot harder to do now. Oh, Commu- communicate, of course. Com- communication, you know, it's that I don't. I again, I I see I see the point of that. I see the. I see what you're saying with that argument, but I don't think it's 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 relevant now. Only I don't think you can make, really make an, an analogy out of it. Only because it's it you know, it's it's totally different now. Would be you know commu- to shut down somebody's communication like that would be nearly impossible. To shut down somebody's food supply would be a lot you know a lot more. I don't know. It's just a lot harder to do that. But. Well, I think this has been a pretty cool conversation. Do you want to wrap it up, Danilo? Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, you know, I mean, the um, you know, the idea of bleeding state or or you know, you know, living as an agorist, um, you know, like I said before, um, it, it to me, it really depends on you know the individual's mindset, you know, or their where they are at philosophically, and uh, you know, in the past, you know, of course, we can't change the past, and we all did things that we you know perhaps regret and that we consider immoral, but again, you how, how can you? How can you judge that if you weren't in that mindset at the time, right? Now you have the different mindset. Now if you do the same thing, now it's a different, it's a different beast, right? It's a different um, circumstance. So, so, um, so yeah. So, so you know, like uh, like Jeremy said, like if you're gonna take the moral route, then you know you're right. You, you can't eat food because all food is subsidized. You can't wear clothes because cotton is subsidized. <laughs> you can't you can't drive on the road. You can't do all this stuff if you're gonna take the absolute moral perspective but um you know you know you can't use currency because that's completely go- completely government control so you can't really do anything so so you know in the end we um you know we make do with what we can you know we we you know death by a thousand cuts right we we uh we uh you know try to um bleed it in any way we possibly can talking about it blogging about it making podcasts you know um some you know accepting government welfare as an anarchist bleeding it that way or starving it um you know uh not contributing to the uh the the uh, you know the federal extortion racket so you know there's many different ways to do it and to me it's all about the mindset and that's why you know it's so important that we focus on writing and blogging and making videos you know because we're trying to affect people's minds right because ideas move mountains right that if you want to eviscerate the leviathan you have to affect people's mentality people's ideas right so <clears throat> So that's where it's at for me. But um, so if you uh, if, if anyone wants to uh, donate to the show, um, so we accept uh, Bitcoin and we're on Patreon um, and we also uh, have a T-shirt line. Uh, what's the t- Teespring? Oh uh, well, no, com? I've I've been I, I I got on another one that isn't as kind of uh, weird as as Teespring. Uh, I'll I'll make sure to give it to Jeremy so he can put it into the uh, link. But it is on our website under the merch page. All right. So um, hold on. So, yeah, I'll pull it up and tell you. Um, so very sorry that we uh, we lost Michael. Maybe maybe the uh, the moral pragmatist uh, argument was too too much for him, and he couldn't his uh, you know his internet couldn't take it. Spreadshirt. So. <laughs> Spreadshirt. dot com slash seeds of liberty. Yeah. Okay. There you go. We'll include that in the description below. So um, so yeah. Thank you everyone for listening. Uh, seeds of Liberty podcast. Um, and we hope everyone has a wonderful day. Take care. Peace. Have a great day. Thank you for listening.